In this tutorial, you're going to learn all about MailChimp audience groups and how to use them successfully in your MailChimp account. This is part of the MailChimp playlist on my channel where you learn everything you need to know to get up and running with MailChimp. That's a link to in the description down below. And if you have any questions or comments about this video, please leave them down below. I try to answer them the best I can. And if this is your first time here, my name is Bjorn from WP Learning Lab. We, we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your customers, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. Now let's get started. Groups or audience groups are a way to organize your contacts inside of MailChimp. The big benefit of groups, as opposed to tags or segments, is that your subscribers can actually categorize themselves, meaning you can add check boxes or radio buttons to a sign-up form and they can check the appropriate answers for themselves and that puts them automatically into the groups that you've created. As opposed to tags, which allow you to organize your subscribers on the back end, people who are your subscribers, they can't manage the tags, but they can manage which groups they're in. They can do it at the sign-up form, they can do it in their preferences center after they've signed up. So they can auto-manage which groups they want to belong to. And speaking of tags and also segments, I have tutorials dedicated to those. Those are in the card above in the description down below, as well as the full MailChimp playlist you've heard about. So make sure you check those out. To create groups, we're going to create a landing page because that's where the magic happens. So we go to create, we go to build the landing page. We pick one, any one. I'm going to choose this lead generation page over here. And we have a sign up form content block. That's what this little area is called. The content blocks are of various types. You can see them all right here. You only have one sign up form content block per landing page. That's why there's not another option to add one here. So if I click on here and then scroll down, we see add interest group. These are the groups we're talking about. So when you click on it, you have the option to have it be check boxes so people can select more than one, radio buttons or drop downs and we give it a category name. So let's call this favorite sport and group names within the category of favorite sport, soccer, basketball, cricket. For example, you can add another one if you want. Let's say football, the North American kind, and then click on submit. But before I do, I wanna give some more thought to which option I wanna choose because people can have more than one favorite sport. But if I wanna send them content specific to their favorite things, I don't want them to come in here and like all these sports because that doesn't help me. That doesn't help me personalize my communications with them. So I prefer to choose radio buttons whenever possible or a drop down because they can only select one in either of those cases. I'm going to choose radio buttons since there's a lot of form real estate available. If there's not as much space on your form because you have a lot of other fields, you might want to choose a drop down, which doesn't take up as much space as a list of options like a radio button does. Click on submit. Here it shows our interest groups are being created. The page will refresh and they'll be added. And then when the page refreshes, like it said earlier, the group will be appearing here, but it's not. What you have to do is click on your sign up box again and then choose the group you created. In this case, favorite sport. And now it appears here as radio buttons. I also created a second one just for fun industry segment, creator, coach, or marketer's options in the drop down format. So now when people come to the sign up form, They'll fill in the email address. They'll self-select one of these options and one of these options, and then they'll be grouped into those groups inside of your MailChimp account. Let's give this a go. Let's save and close this thing. Let's give it a page title. Let's call it Wild Country Landing Page. So that's just the name of the template. I'll also make that the page title up here. Save that. You can edit the URL. See how I copied and pasted, capitalized with spaces, and then it auto-corrected it to lowercase with dashes, which is pretty awesome. Save that, you can also use your own custom domain if you want to. And if you're finding this tutorial helpful, click the like button because that helps this video show up for more people on YouTube so we can spread the knowledge and help more people with this information. So make sure you click like if you like this video. But for the purposes of this video, I just wanna show you how groups work. So let's publish this. And then if we open this URL in the current browser that we're in, we're not gonna see the opt-in form because we're logged in. So we can't see anything where the form normally is. So instead, let's open incognito mode or a different browser. Now we see our form. Now I can enter my email address. That one's probably already in here. It's good enough. Favorite sport, soccer, football to the rest of the world. Industry segment, choose creator, then click subscribe. 
success. You've been added to the audience. Let's go back into our MailChimp account and go to audience, then all contacts. And we have our contact right here that we added, including our favorite sport, soccer, industry segment, creator. If I click on this person's profile, we see the groups over here. Every group we add, it's going to be more entries under the group section here. If you click on edit, we get the same options as we had on the form. We've got a radio button, select for the favorite sport, drop down for the industry segment. These can be changed at any time by you, the MailChimp account owner, and also by this individual using their preferences. Those preferences can be accessed at the bottom of pretty much every email that's sent out from MailChimp. There's a link to unsubscribe and change your preferences. They can choose different groups. So if you want your subscribers to do it on their own without you having to do it manually, you can send out an email saying, hey, could you update your group preferences? Just go here and click this and update them. That could save you a lot of work if you have a big list. And so now that we have these specific groups, we can send emails to these specific groups and just to members in these specific groups if we want to. And I'll show you how that works right now. Head over to campaigns and then go to create campaign, choose regular email. You can also get here, you recognize this from earlier this page. You can also get here just by going to the pencil and going to create, go to design email. And this would be a one-off email you're creating here. Although it doesn't have to be, but this example I'm showing here would be a one-off email. Go to edit recipients under segment or tag, choose group or a new segment. We'll get into segments in a different video. That one's in the card above and the description down below. They're really powerful and they're different than groups and tags, but they're definitely something you need to know to run your MailChimp account properly. But under this group or new, new segment section, we have the option to choose groups. Let's choose favorite sport it is one of soccer, for example, because we know we have one user in that group and we can send just to people who like soccer. We can also add another one. Let's add our industry segment. So now we can send to people who like soccer and are also creators. That's not true. And since I have any selected up here, it's now going to send to anybody who likes soccer and or anybody who likes, or sorry, who is a creator as an industry segment. If you choose all, then the contacts this is sent to, they will have to have soccer selected as their favorite sport and they have to be a creator that they've self-selected here. And you can also add more in here if you want. Any one of these. This is getting into more of the segmentation video, so I cover all this in the other video. But you can filter down very specifically and target very specific individuals on your list by using groups. And that allows you to tailor the content. For example, if you have an e-commerce store for soccer, basketball, cricket, and football, and people have self-selected these groups as their favorites, you know what to email them. You can email them very specifically about soccer. Instead of having to email about all four to everybody, you can email very specifically to each individual group. And that's the power of groups. That's why you wanna make sure you're using groups in your business. You don't wanna go overkill with the groups because you can definitely have too many groups. It really depends on your business and your audience size. You don't necessarily wanna be filtering this down to where you have 18 or 20 different groups, which means you have to create 18 or 20 different emails to send out to all of them. The point of diminishing returns comes pretty quickly. So you wanna keep your group number fairly low, keep it as overarching categories, maybe your product categories or your topic categories. Just keep it pretty general for the groups and then you can speak specifically to people who are interested in those groups. And every once in a while, maybe every six months, three months, four months, you can send out an email asking people to check their group settings to see if that's the group they want to be in. Because interests change. Soccer might be my favorite today, but maybe basketball is my favorite tomorrow. That's unlikely, but depending on your business, that might happen. Or another example could be if you're in the fashion industry or any kind of retail industry that has different products for different times of year, then people might want to change their group status to be, I want to hear about winter clothes now. Or I don't want to hear about winter clothes because I live in Australia when it's winter in North America. So I want to hear about summer clothes right now. So people can self-select what they want to hear from you. And that is the power of groups. Combined with tags and segments, which I've done in separate tutorials, you can organize your audience very well in order to run your business very efficiently 
using MailChimp. And this has all been done in the free account as well, which is pretty awesome. Next up, check out this playlist right here, which is all about MailChimp. I keep referencing this playlist in these videos and it has everything you have to know to get started with MailChimp. So make sure you check that out and also download this PDF right over here. It is the top most important email sequences every business needs. It's a smart PDF. So when I update it and add new sequences, they'll be auto updated to your copy of this document, which is pretty awesome. And if you haven't done so yet, also click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss new future videos. My name is Bjorn from WP Learning Lab. Till next time, keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.